How did you and Madlib decide to work together? Yeah, I got a call one day from, um, it was from Peanut Butter Wolf, up there at Stone Store Wolf, was a good friend of mine, Big Up Wolf. And um, he mentioned this cat Madlib. I wasn't familiar with his work at the time. But I guess he heard some of my stuff and he was reaching out to me so that we could do a record together, like, you know, and want to give me some beats and whatnot. So at the time, it was the same same time when I was doing records for a lot of different companies and whatnot. So, you know, they all had to fly me out to L.A., you know, so I'm saying? They're like, good thing, flew out there, met these cats, cool, you know what I'm saying? Cats is cool from day one, you know what I'm saying? I got along with these dudes, you know, just good-spirited, good-hearted people and um, real record diggers, like, you know what I'm saying, beat maker, you know, had the same kind, we had the same kind of, same kind of vision and how, how we did records is the same, you know, it's real similar, you know, still unique though, he had his unique style. So that's really how it started. He reached out ever since then, that's been my man, you know what yeah. I mean? They were all living in a house together at the time, is that right? With the studio and the, yeah, and the bomb shelter in the, the basement? Yeah, yeah, they had a little mini mansion up on the hill. It was a pretty big crib though. It was, a lot of space in there, you know, overlooking the, the the hills. So it was a good good place to work at, you know what I'm saying? Real quiet up there. So what was a typical day like with you and Madlib trying to um, put this album together? A typical day? Well, were there typical days? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I can put it in a nutshell, you know what I'm saying? It was more like, okay, I'm trying to finish the record so I get back home. You know, I'm staying in L.A. I'm trying to get back to my children and whatnot. So I'm working as fast as I possibly can without sacrificing the quality, you know? So, but he's working too like that. Like, I would hardly see him. We're in the same house. But he's always in the bomb shelter. I'm always up on the deck writing, right? And then he'll give me another CD. I get the CD, and I'm writing, you know what I'm saying? And then he's back in the bomb shelter, so I would hardly speak to him. Like, we hardly ever, you know, we might stop and he'll burn one and we'll listen to the beat, and then that's it. And then the next two days, I probably won't see him. But then I was getting mad work done, knocking it out. And um, and then at the end of, the, like, week, we, we'll listen to the shit after the end of the week and be like, all right, you know, I might let him know, yo, here's the angle I'm thinking about. All I need is a virtual closet on this one, and it's done. And then that's it. You know, so I hardly we hardly spoke really. It's more through like telepathy and like we spoke really through the music. Like he'll hear the joint, and that's like my conversation with him. Then I hear a beat, and that's like what he's saying to me. You know what I mean? Like it's real bug. It's still to this day. That's how we. That's how we do it.